You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Hollywood Star Time. Today, the return of Frank James, starring Henry Fonda and featuring the American ballad singer, Burl Ives. Each week at this time, Frigidaire brings you radio versions of Hollywood's finest motion pictures with Hollywood's greatest stars. Today you will hear 20th Century Fox star Henry Fonda in the exciting radio production of The Return of Frank James. Henry Fonda soon may be seen in John Ford's 20th Century Fox picture, My Darling Clementine. Now in just a few moments, The Return of Frank James. Frigidaire, the greatest name in refrigeration, is made only by General Motors. And it is this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator today. The seven million Frigidaires built and sold are the best proof of Frigidaire's outstanding record of dependability, of lasting satisfaction. For back of every great refrigeration principle pioneered by Frigidaire... Back of every exciting new Frigidaire feature, back of every exclusive Frigidaire advantage, is one all-important purpose, to keep food good to eat. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember the record of millions of Frigidaires in millions of American kitchens. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. And now the return of Frank James, starring Henry Fonda. Narrative ballad sung by Burl Ives, and another thrilling musical score conceived and conducted by Alfred Newman. It was on a Saturday night, Jesse James was at home, talking to his family brave. When the thief and the coward, that little Robert Ford, laid Jesse James in his grave. Poor Jesse had a wife to mourn all her life, the children, they were brave. But that dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard, Laid Jesse James in his grave. Kansas City Star. Jesse James, killed by Ford Brothers. Notorious outlaw had been living secretly in St. Joseph, Missouri, under the name of Howard. St. Louis Democrat. Jesse James, alias Mr. Howard, shot in back by Ford Boys. Topeka, Kansas Times. Ford Boys face trial in murder of Jesse James. Frank James, still at large. Mr. Frank! Mr. Frank! Whoa, there. Whoa, boy. Mr. Frank, you better drop that plow now and get on to business. Why, what's the matter, Pinky? You went and got our best horse in a lather now, and what for? Plenty what for, boy. Uh, Mr. Frank! My name is Woodson now, Pinky. I'm an honest Ozark farmer. Remember? Woodson. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Woodson. Mr. Frank, you know what the news is back in town? Come on, Pinky. We got work to do. Out with it. Now, you simply got to go after them Ford brothers, Mr. Frank. Uh, Mr. Woodson. I told both of you once and for all. They've captured the Ford brothers. They'll all take care of them. No jury on earth that acquit anyone for a foul murder like they done. That's perfectly so, Mr. Woodson. The jury found them guilty as sin. There you are. And the governor turns right around and pardons the both of them 20 minutes later. What? You mean they're free? Yes, sir, Mr. Woodson. Clem, if you want me for anything, you'll be able to find me through Major Todd of the Liberty Gazette in Liberty, Missouri. Oh, Frank, can't I go with you? Oh, Clem, you and Pinky take care of the farm. Pinky sat on the horse. Yes, sir, Mr. Woodson. James is the name. Frank James. Brother of Jesse.
like to buy a gazette from you, Major Todd. Ah, you laugh. Frank, boy. Hello, sir. <laughs> I was expecting you all along. Uh, but you're a wee bit late. Not here anymore? Bob and Charlie Ford hightailed it out of Liberty a few days ago. Where to? Lit out for the West someplace. How about that pardon, Major? All part of the same piece, Frank. That hound McCoy and his St. Louis Midland Railroad put the Fords up to killing Jesse and then got them a pardon and the $10,000 reward. McCoy again. First he killed my mother, indirect. Then my brother. You uh, happen to have seen this in the papers? Something the boys have been reciting lately. Hmm. The dirty little coward who shot Mr. Howard and laid poor Jesse in his grave. Nice poetry. They all love Jesse James. I didn't exactly dislike my brother myself, Major. I've been thinking. It was McCoy money killed Jesse. Then it's fitting I should use McCoy money to get the Ford boys. Mm. How's that? The St. Louis Midland Railway pays off on the 15th of the month. Money ought to be in the express office tonight. Well, son, a few years ago when I was practicing law, I'd have called that unlawful. Today, as a newspaper editor, well, uh, well, Frank, I don't know. All I can say is don't hurt no one and don't get hurt. Good luck to you, Frank. Hey, Frank. Who's that? No tricks now, shoot. It's me, Frank. Clem. Clem, I almost shot you, you little fool. I just had to come. I had to. Change just in time to walk into some trouble. Find it safe with me. Can we get out the back way, Clem? I got in the back way. Keep down and follow me. When I yell now, jump up and run for the horses. Easy now. Right after you. Take your time and lay low. Yep. Hey, who's this laying here? The watchman. The shot from outside hit him. Dead? Don't know. Easy. Easy. Ready? Run for it. Don't argue with me, Brown. You're the railway's ace detective. Prove it, Brown. Prove it. Then, sir, with your permission, I'd like to leave for the West. Why? Because the Fords went West. Maybe Denver. And I have an idea that wherever they are, Frank James won't be far behind. Who's there? May I speak to you, Mr. Woodson? Uh, come in. Hello, ma'am. My name is Eleanor Stone. Happy to meet you, Miss Stone. I'm a reporter on my father's newspaper, the Denver Star. Newspaper? The Denver Star is right across the street from your hotel. I know, but a lady newspaper man. That beats all. Oh, I I'm not really a reporter yet. My father is opposed to it. He doesn't think women can succeed in newspaper work. But you can help me, Mr. Woodson. Be glad to help whatever way I can, ma'am. Well... I've been hearing a rumor on the veranda of the hotel to the effect that you and a young friend of yours saw Frank James killed in Mexico. That is absolutely correct, ma'am. Oh, really? Oh, if you could just tell me how it happened and I got the scoop on it, I, I'd be a reporter. Sit down, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Now. Well, here's how it was. Uh -huh. A lot of the boys were hooping it up in this here bar, you see. This is in Mexico. Yes, I know. It was in Mexico. Well, Frank James was there. Drinking by himself, minding his own business. When a little girl, maybe 12 or 14 or 10 years old, comes in looking for her daddy. Go on. Well, there's a hoodlum there. Name of Lefty. He makes a swipe at the little girl, trying to kick her. Just for practice. Well, ma'am, Frank James gets up out of his chair full of wrathfulness. And with one punch, he knocks Red kicking. I thought his name was Lefty. Uh, he was a shady character with lots of names. Oh. Well, go on. Well, his gang was there, however, and they let's go with all their armaments. Yes. It's one against twelve. Oh. Frank knocks off two of them. He gets a bullet in the arm. Mm -hmm. He shoots down Lefty like a dog. Kills three more of them. He gets it in the leg. He's oh. down. He goes down. His gun's still blazing. The wolves close in. And that's all there was to it, Miss Stone. What a wonderful story. Ain't it, though? When did all this happen? Oh, about six weeks ago. 
But then Frank James could have been mixed up with that express office robbery where the watchman was killed. Was the watchman dead? But didn't you read about it? I know, ma'am. Oh, I must hurry across to the newspaper office and get the story out. Oh, my goodness, this is wonderful. Goodbye, Mr. Woodson, and, and, uh, and thank you so much. Sometimes, if I hear more news, could I see you? Oh, any time at all. Because this story is going to make me a regular fixture on the Denver Star. <laughs> Thanks to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Denver City Star. Frank James killed in Mexico gun battle. Goes down in hail of bullets. End of James Boyd. Gentlemen, for one week only see Bob and Charlie Ford in the death of Jesse James. The men who killed the noted bandit Jesse James show you exactly how they did it. Bob and Charlie Ford in the death of Jesse James. And it only cost... I thought that newspaper story would bring the Ford boys out into the open. I'm going inside, Clem. You watch the horses. You bet, Frank. We may need them in a big hurry. So come one, come all. I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, only 50 cents to see Bob and Charlie Ford in the real-life drama of the death of Jesse James. Oh, Frank and Jesse James, we have you trapped at last. Reach for some sky or by the eternal, we'll blow you to kingdom come. Won't we, Charlie? Yes, sirree, Bob. Look out, Charlie. They're going to shoot. Aha! Uh-huh, so it's a fight you want. Give it to him, Charlie. That and that. Jesse's down. Good work, Charlie. Look out, Frank. He's getting away. Frank, the cowardly vomit, got away. But we'll catch up with him someday. Them as lives for gunpowder, does for gunpowder, was ever thought. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Quiet, please, quiet. Right here and now, besides thanking you, my brother Charlie and me want to say that anyone who believes that rotten song about how we shot Jesse James in the back is a cussed liar. You all just saw how it really happened, fair and square. That's a fact, Bob. Fair and square. Thank you, sir. Uh, Will the gentleman in the box please stand up and repeat that only louder? Sure thing, Bob. Sure. Thank you, my dear son. Jesus, Russell. Uh, Charlie. It's him. Frank jumped from his chair, the Ford boys full of fear. They thought they'd better go. They didn't stop to fight, but started in the flight. But Frank, he got one dirty so-and-so. The rap Charlie Ford, oh, praise be the Lord, he fell right off his mare. So that dirty little coward who helped shoot Mr. Howard was a-leaving of this world so fair. That's one of them, Clem. Charlie Ford was so scared he fell off his own horse and down that cliff. Yeah, that's one of them for Jesse. Yeah, but Bob Ford got away. It's all right, Clem. Bob Ford is next. He's next. In just a few moments, Frigid Air will bring you the exciting second act of The Return of Frank James, starring Henry Fonda. Seven million Frigidaires built and sold. Millions of these Frigidaire refrigerators serving dependably, faithfully in so many useful ways. That's because dependability and usefulness are built into a Frigidaire refrigerator right from the start. Consider the meter miser. Frigidaire engineers set out to design a cold-making mechanism that would do away with oiling, belts, and pulleys and noise. One that would make oceans of cold on a mere trickle of current. So they built a powerful little compressor that had only two simple parts that move. Because when parts aren't there, they can't cause trouble or wear. Then they built a compact motor and made it a part of the compressor. Then they sealed the whole thing in oil in a single housing no bigger than a bowling ball. The result was the meter miser. The simplest refrigerating mechanism ever built. 
And you know, it's the mechanism that really counts in a refrigerator. So keep in mind the engineering skill at Frigidaire that has worked constantly to make better products for more people for less money. Remember this when you choose your next refrigerator. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. We continue with the radio production of the 20th Century Fox picture, The Return of Frank James, starring Henry Fonda. 20th Century Fox also are producers of Sentimental Journey, which stars Maureen O'Hara, William Bendix, and John Payne. Now, act two of The Return of Frank James, starring Henry Fonda and featuring American balladeer Burl Ives. When Jesse came to harm, Frank James left the farm to chase the brothers for. He robbed the railway that gave the Ford boys pay, cause it laid brother Jesse in his grave. Frank caught the Fords and making boastful words, he chased them up into the hills. Charlie Ford, he got spilled by his own horse, he was killed. He had no time to make his will. Now to check upon the story that Frank James had gone to glory, a ruthless sleuth went far. He went to Denver town, this detective named a Brown, to the office of the Denver Star. Well, Miss Stone, your description of the man who told you that fantastic yarn about being Frank James being killed in Mexico proves the man was Frank James himself. Oh, I don't believe it. Remember, his brother hid out in Missouri. Under the name of Mr. Howard. I see. That's all, Miss Stone. Now, not a word of this to Frank James, of course. Of course, Mr. Brown, of course. Did you send for me, Miss Stone? Yes. Put down the shade on the door. Now then. There's a detective in town looking for you. As soon as he gets enough help, he's going after you. You've got to get out of town. He told you who I am? Yes. But I know how the Ford brothers killed your brother and how the law miscarried to let them go free. I also know you were trying to lead an honest life when it all happened. That's why you're helping me escape? Not entirely. They're, they're going to hang your Negro friend, Pinky Washington. Pinky? What for? For the death of the express agent in Liberty, Missouri. Pinky wasn't even it there. It just came over the wire. They're going to hang him. This is more of McCoy's doing. His way of getting back at me. You've got to go and save Pinky, Frank. Uh, I can't. You can't? Pal Clem just found out that Bob Ford's hiding out in a mining camp down at Creed. I got to get him. Do you mean to say that it's more important for you to kill a man in revenge than to save the life of an innocent man? Bob Ford shot my brother in the back, Eleanor. Don't you dare call me Eleanor. Not after this. I'm, I'm right sorry, Miss Stone. Thanks for warning me about the detective. Goodbye. <laughs> Making good time, ain't we, Frank? It's another two days to Creed and Bob Ford. We'll make it on time, I bet. Turn left at the next fork. You mean right? I mean left. We ain't going to Creed. Ain't going to Creed? We're going to Liberty to Missouri to free Pinky Washington. It's that woman. It's always a woman. There's the fork, Clem. Turn left. <laughs> They galloped day and night, they rode with all their might. They hopped the fast train rolling on. With their pistol shiny black in the engineer's back, they reached Kansas City by the dawn. Mighty surprised to see you down here, Miss Stone. Your dad know you're down here in Liberty? Yes. In fact, he told me that you could help me. Mm, I wish I could. Believe me. I talked to Mr. McCoy of the railroad to ask the governor for leniency for Pinky. You're a mad girl. Why, McCoy rigged the whole deal. He's striking at Frank through that poor colored man, that's all. If you ever see Frank James again, you can tell him this for me. Tell him that I think he's low and mean and selfish to let an innocent man die so he can satisfy his revenge. 
You tell him. Why don't you tell me yourself, Miss Stone? Frank, boy. Oh, Frank. I knew you'd come. Did you now? Thought of everything. Yes. All right, Frank. Put him up. Oh, Mr. Brown. You might have known we'd catch him one way or other, ma'am. All right, I'll defend you, Frank. I may be a mite rusty, but McCoy and his purchased Yankee prosecutor will be breathing hard before I'm finished with them. And I shall prove that not only did this Frank James rob the express office, but that he, in keeping with his long, murderous career, I am definitely... The defendant is not answering in this court to a long, murderous career any more than the prosecutor is answering to the charge of being in the pay of the St. Louis Midland Railroad. I object to that innuendo. And I object to the objection. Your Honor! Gentlemen! Gentlemen! You're a Frank James, are you not, sir? Ain't no doubt about that. Why are you in this court of law today? Why? You came to Liberty, Missouri of your own free will. Why? They was aiming to hang Pinky Washington for something he didn't do, so I came to prevent it. Now, Frank, will you tell the court why you robbed the express office? Well, McCoy money killed my brother Jesse, so I took McCoy money to hunt the Ford boys. Object! I object! 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 I object! Uh, Colonel Jackson, you told the court a while ago that you knew Frank James many years ago. Nah, I didn't, sir. When did you first meet Frank James? As a boy of 14, when he first joined up in our cause. Ah, that was with a mob of armed men called Quantrell's Gorillas, was it not? Gorillas? Gorillas, did he say? Now, Mr. James, be quiet, please. Gorillas indeed, sir. The finest cavalry in the war, sir. The flower of Southern Horse. Why, at the Battle of Three... Your Honor, Street. must I refight the entire rebellion in order to get rebellion. a straight forward answer? Did he say rebellion? Order, order! If you are referring, sir, to the war for the Southern Confederacy... All right, I... all right, all right. Enough. The state rests. Looks like it needs a rest. Order, Mr. Grant, order! Gentlemen of the jury, in closing... Let me remind you that Frank had only one thought, the honorable one of avenging the cowardly murder of his brother. To get on the track of the Ford boys, he needed money. And uh, you know how rich you can get running an Ozark farm. <laughs> now, we have shown that the bullet that killed the watchman was a rifle bullet. And Frank James had only his 44s with him at the robbery. And only as a last resort did he commit that robbery. And let us see. Did he rob an honest shopkeeper or a bank containing the thrifty savings of the poor? Or did he take the money from the railroad that conspired to break his mother's heart and to murder his beloved brother, Jesse James? Object, Southern! All right. Ignore my question, gentlemen of the jury. Southern gentlemen all. Who will remember this forty-four caliber gun entered in evidence as the gun that Frank James used as a mere boy to help rout the Yankees that burned Hickoryville? Uh, saved your barn and horses, didn't he, Luke? The gun that helped clear Clay County of the northern invaders saved your house and farm, didn't it, Ira? Gentlemen of the South. Now I call upon you to... Jupiter. Gentlemen of the jury, cast your eyes to the back of this court of law and see Robert Ford, the dirty little coward who shot Mr. Howard, come here to gloat over Frank James when Frank can't even fight back anymore. Hell, oh, what about it? It's a public trial, ain't it? Yes, Mr. Robert Ford, it is. And welcome, welcome. Now, gentlemen of the jury, the judge will instruct you now in your obvious duty. Now, jury having no questions as to their procedure, they may retire to their deliberations. Your Honor? Yes? Do we have to leave the box? Have you already reached your verdict? Uh, we have, Your Honor. And what is the verdict? Well, we find the defendant, Frank James, not guilty of anything. Well, and now, Frank, go get that Bob Bolt bomber. Go out and get it. Thanks, boy. Look out, Frank, you kill me. Anyone getting a doctor for Clem? Yes, Frank. Frank. Easy, boy, easy. He pulled a gun on you, so I draw it on him. Did I get him? Hit him twice where it matters. Good. I feel better already. It was self-defense, Clem. Wasn't it, Frank? Don't matter. Major Todd will defend you, Clem. <laughs> I don't have to defend him. You shot a man dead, Major. Sheriff's deputy's got a right to shoot a man who's shooting at another man, ain't it? Sheriff's deputy? Sure. 
I got Clem swore in as a deputy before the trial started. They not knowing who he was. <laughs> I expected trouble. Well, then I guess you and Pinky can take care of the farm while I make another trip up to Denver. Aw, oh, can't I go along, Frank? Uh, I'm making this trip with Miss Stone. Oh. Oh. Yes, oh. Oh. So, good people, please take heed this tale of hate and greed. The Ford boys got what they gave. Yes, the dirty little coward who shot at Mr. Howard, like Jesse James, are laying in their grave. <laughs> Fonda and Burl Ives for a magnificent performance. In a moment, Mr. Fonda will be back. Also, may we thank the splendid supporting cast. Ernest Whitman, who portrayed Pinky Washington, Lorene Tuttle, who was Eleanor, Joe Kearns, who played Major Todd, and Conrad Binion as Clem. The radio adaptation of The Return of Frank James was written by Milton Geiger, music was supervised by Alfred Newman, and the entire production was under the direction of Robert L. Redd. Hollywood Star Time is presented each week at this time with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer, who invites you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire home appliances. Electric refrigerators, electric ranges, electric water heaters, home freezers, kitchen cabinets, and a wide variety of refrigerating and air conditioning equipment for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. <laughs> Henry Fonda. Well, Henry, it's mighty good to see you back again on Hollywood's Radio Row. It's like old times. Let me tell you, Wendell, it's good to get back to radio and pictures. I got a real kick out of dusting off good old Frank James again today. And I can assure you that I'm planning to tune into Hollywood Star Time next Sunday to hear Cesar Romero and Gregory Ratoff in Cafe Metropole. So, till then, goodbye. This is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. Thank <laughs> you.